Hi, I'm Dr. George Best of Best Health and Wellness in San Antonio, Texas. And on this video, I'm going to give you a little explanation of uh, something I get a lot of questions about in my practice. A lot of people will have sciatica and back pain and other things that are related to disc herniations. And in some cases, the symptoms will actually switch from one side to the other. And uh, that's something that a lot of people have trouble understanding. So I'm going to do a little demonstration that explains why that happens. Um, I'm going to change into some other clothing, make it a little easier for me to move around, and then I'll get started with the demonstration. I'm going to use these curtains to demonstrate what happens when a disc pushes out against the nerves. The curtains are going to represent the nerves in the spine, and I'm going to be actually representing the disc in this situation. Now, under normal circumstances, the disc and the nerve orientation is kind of like what you see right now. The, uh, if we were looking at the back of the spine, if you're standing over there and, and looking at the back of the spine, the nerves would be slightly in front of the disc, and the disc is not going to be touching the nerves. It will be just, a, just very, in very close proximity, but not actually creating any, t any touching and not narrowing the openings that the nerves come out of. But in the case of a disc that gets damaged, what will happen is it will start to push up against one or both of the nerves. And in many cases what will happen is it will push primarily off to one side, and so you'll always have the symptoms on that one side. But in some cases you'll have what's called a central protrusion, or sometimes you'll see it referred to as a broad-based protrusion or, or herniation, where it kind of spreads out into that opening where the nerves are, and it'll actually put a little pressure on both nerves, or it may just simply narrow the openings around those nerves. And what will happen is, whichever side's getting the worst pressure, typically that's where you're going to feel the symptoms. So if it's a little bit worse off to this side, that's where you get the symptoms. If it's a little worse off to this side, that's where you get the symptoms. But in some cases, the disc will actually shift side to side, depending on the mechanical stresses involved, because the disc on the inside is a gel. And that gel can kind of ooze, if you will, from one side to the other, depending on what mechanical stresses are present. So in a case where you've got some narrowing on both sides, let's say it starts out where it's putting more pressure over here. And what will happen is that the body will contort somewhat and twist around, and also you're, you're uh, probably going to move a little differently because you're in pain. And what happens is you, you shift some of the stress off of this side, and the disc gradually oozes over, and it may center out, and for a time you may have no symptoms, or you may have some symptoms on both sides, or it may shift over and actually start creating more pressure on the other side, and that's why you start getting symptoms there. So this is what happens with disc symptoms that change, is that you have the disc is actually going to shift based on the mechanical stresses in the spine, and that is somewhat out of your conscious control, and somewhat uh, it's due to the movements and positions you get in to try to ease up the symptoms on one side, sometimes it'll then wind up shifting it over to the other side. So that's what's going on. In addition to that, I'm going to use this high-tech demonstration using this plastic bag. The plastic bag is going to represent some of the surrounding soft tissues, the ligaments and the supporting structures inside the spine. And in addition to the disc, you'll have some of these other structures there that, under normal circumstances, they're nice and flat, kind of like that. But when you start to have damage to the area, damage to either the disc or to some of those other tissues, what will happen is you start to get inflammation. And essentially what inflammation is like is if we get some air in that bag, in the case of inflammation, it's actually fluid, but you get the idea from the from the air in the bag, is that now you've got this swollen tissue and that can start to press up against the nerve even if the disc is not itself touching it. So what will happen is you can get some fairly significant symptoms due to inflammation. And this is where medication and also spinal injections come in is that they're trying to get rid of the inflammation. And if it's effective, what happens is that they're able to gradually shrink that inflammation down and get the pressure off the nerve that way. So that's 
the various things that can happen and why the symptoms will change and sometimes change rather dramatically in a relatively short span of time with disc types of problems.